Stories recapped here. Today I will show you a drama, fantasy, sci-fi film from 2013, titled After the Dark. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. James oversleeps and barely makes it to class, Mr. Zimmet, a philosophy teacher, reluctantly lets him in. His girlfriend Petra, the best student in her class, gives him a disappointed look. It's an international school in Jakarta. It is their last day. Mr. Zimmet has challenged his class of 20 with thought exercises to prepare them for their future. The class gives their examples of thought experiments. For example, if you give a monkey a typewriter and an infinite amount of time, it will surely type out the entire Hamlet eventually, or trolley problem, one with a lever, where you have to choose between one or four people, and the obese man problem where you have to push him on the tracks to stop the trolley. Would you do it? Mr. Zimmet holds an exercise in which he assumes an impending atomic apocalypse. There's a bunker that will give them shelter for a year. They look around and see all kinds of leisures. The problem with this is that there are only supplies for 10 people. The students have to decide which of them to let in and they do not have much time before the atomic radiation reaches them. The best student, Petra, initially refuses to participate, but Simit threatens to lower her boyfriend's academic grade if she does not. So she stays. Zimit distributes cards containing details about the characters of the students in the exercise. The odd thing that everyone notices is that after Zimit gives Petra and James their cards, he starts coughing. Everyone starts to introduce their characters in the thought exercise. James is an organic farmer and Petra is an engineer. Real estate agent. Carpenter. Opera singer. Hedge fund manager. Harpist. Astronaut. PhD in chemistry. Electrician. Wine auctioneer. Surgeon. Housekeeper. Fashion designer. Pastry chef. Zoologist. Psychotherapist. Soldier. Senator. And last but not least, a published poet. He is immediately shot by Zimit, on the grounds that this is more humane than letting them die by radiation, since he would not get into the bunker anyway. Zimit is part of the exercise, but his abilities are hidden. The students defend their right to enter the bunker, then there is a group vote after the discussion. The last place was between Zimit and the opera singer, Zimit got the spot. In their hypothetical scenario, they take five minutes to say goodbye, and in the classroom they move the desks to sit with the survivors and the abandoned. They hear gunshots. Zimit has killed everyone who did not get a spot in the bunker. The group is shocked. Petra whispers to James that she does not want him in the bunker. James devises a plan where everyone, before going into the bunker, gathers some plants. While everyone is separated, he goes to each of them in turn and tells them that they will meet in the bunker. After a while, Zimit notices this. They disable the external keypad and close the bunker while Zimit stays outside. Inside, they take a look at what they'll be working with next year. An artificial garden, a day bed, anything to relieve depression. James meets Petra later on the bed and tells her he can get through anything with her. When James falls asleep, Petra goes to check on Zimit. Outside, Zimit holds up a piece of paper that says only he has the exit code. The group is not sure if what he wrote is true or not. They will have to live for a year to find an answer to this. The group lives in a bunker and performs some mundane tasks there. Their lives are unsatisfying and agonizing. Petra still checks on Zimit's body from time to time. She looks dejected. It has not been what you would call a heavenly year. They wondered if the end of their first ordeal would be the beginning of their next. After surviving the year in the bunker, the survivors discover that the exit code is necessary. All attempts to break out of the bunker are futile. Their supplies are depleted. They all end themselves. The thought exercise was a bust. Zimit's card is a bunker builder, so he's the only one who has the code. They decide to try the exercise again. They still have a bunker and still have an apocalypse. While everyone is distracted, Zimit runs in and grabs a gun. Petra takes notice. It turns out that the previously distributed cards contain a second detail that changes the vote. James, an organic farmer who is homosexual, is accepted. The surgeon who was previously approved may now have contracted the Ebola virus and is rejected. She berates Zimit and calls his logic nonsense. The hedge fund manager travels with a bag of gold and is accepted. The bonus is that she is a girl and can carry a child. Carpenter is infertile, but gets in anyway. Petra is also an electrical engineer. Electrician has a very rare disease and is rejected. Psychotherapist cannot have children. The zoologist blogs for PETA. The chemist with a PhD who won the genetic lottery. The real estate agent is also a midwife. The pastry chef has nothing extra on his menu and is a bit confused. The opera singer speaks seven languages, but she has a second edition that is not so welcome, in three years she will develop a throat tumor. 
Wine auctioneer has an IQ of 200. Fashion designer has nothing significant to add. Harpist with autism spectrum disorder. Senator is the first female Supreme Court justice. Soldier with perfect memory. Housekeeper is just a nice guy. Let's hear the published poet's story. Maybe not this time. Zimit says his spot is for him. They still do not know the code. Those who did not make it into the bunker try to escape the explosions. They fail. Those chosen to live in the bunker rush there. Petra wakes up and goes snooping around. She sees James with the chemist. It turns out that he is also homosexual outside the exercise. Aside from what's on the cards, they keep their personalities within the thought experiment. Petra is mildly disappointed. The group discusses how they will get together to procreate. Since the carpenter is infertile, he is eliminated, as are the chemist and James. Petra is paired with Zimit and off they go. The midwife is with the soldier and the senator is with the housekeeper. Explosions still ravage the earth. After 10 weeks of no pregnancies, Zimit argues that they must change couples. The soldier with the perfect memory refuses, saying they are taking logic too far to solve things. Zimit walks away. A moment later he returns with a gun and threatens everyone but the soldier to leave the room. The chemist hides behind a corner. As everyone leaves, he lunges at Zimit, causing him to drop the gun. The soldier grabs it and holds him at gunpoint, but that doesn't faze him. Zimit seems to get the better of the chemist, but he picks up a nearby pencil and jabs him in the ear. Zimit responds by opening the bunker doors and killing everyone. Another bust. James questions Zimit's motives for the exercise and asks why he seems so intent on punishing them. He mentions the strange cough he had when he assigned him and Petra the roles, and he has not coughed since. He pretends to leave and suddenly bolts to grab the box with the cards. James discovers that the box has hidden compartments and his and Petra's cards have been tampered with. He questions Zimit's vendetta against him. Zimit asks if he remembers the allegory of Plato's cave. In short, a man lives his whole life, since he is a small child, chained to a wall. He only ever sees shadows and hears echoes, assuming that this is reality as it really looks and sounds. One day he is unchained and finds that the shadows are caused by bodies and the echoes are caused by voices. The whole idea of what was real was just an illusion. Zimit says that this allegory is something like James. He claims the exercise is meant to confront James about how his privilege has ill-prepared him for the real world, but James does not believe him. Why make him a farmer, he could have been something useless, like florist. Petra insists that the exercise be done a third time. This time James will be a florist. In their third exercise they are on an island, they are early. Zimit goes for a quick check, we all know it's not just a quick check. He grabs a gun and hides the rest, hears a noise but thinks nothing of it. Once outside, Petra joins him, she offers him an innocent hug, telling that she knows it's been hard on him. Petra asks everyone to trust her to choose who gets to enter the bunker. Everyone agrees. Petra chooses and explains all of her choices. A wine auctioneer with a genius IQ and some wine with her. Outright Zimit is speechless. Fashion designer, dressing well boosts confidence that promotes productivity, which rebuilds civilization, also our poor poet, his second skill is champion poker player and he brought his cards with him. Harpist with autism, some people consider it a gift. Surgeon who was exposed to Ebola, Petra is praying she wasn't infected. Opera singer, she could be mute in three years, but now everyone could fall asleep to her singing. Chemist is taken in because of his perfect genes, but he is distraught that he will be the only one who won't have a partner as he is homosexual. In class he says that statistically someone has to be, the pastry chef comes out of the closet and is allowed in the bunker. Two spots left. Petra chooses James. Zimit has enough, there is no way you can justify it. In class he threatens her with a failing grade. He won't allow this to slide. When he reaches for his gun, it's not there. Petra swindled it while hugging him earlier. She gives him back the gun. He tries to shoot, but the gun is not loaded. Petra hands him two bullets. She doesn't want him to suffer like last time. James threatens Zimit with a rifle. He saw him trying to hide the guns. With a last card under his sleeve, Zimit says that no one knows the exit code except him. Soldier with her perfect memory remembers it from the previous iteration. He leaves defeated. Petra wants to give the last slot to the soldier, in her logic, everyone's life is equal. Soldier outright refuses to take her spot. So the sterile carpenter takes the last spot. James, who is no longer homosexual in this exercise, begs Petra to come. She says she will take the boat and try to get out of the radiation zone, and the carpenter tells that he has the keys to the boat. He pushes her inside, switching places with her before the door closes. Rest rush to the boat to get off the island. Petra continues the thought exercise, 
explaining that despite horrific circumstances, that should make everyone absolutely miserable, somehow they had fun. Cards helped. A lot. Some good wine. Shakespeare performances and original poems. James tells how much he loves Petra, but she hesitates to respond with the same phrase. Petra makes a harp for the harpist and with the opera singer, their evenings were always magical. The bunker was enjoyable and filled with creativity. When they leave, they discover that the bombs never fell. Zimit narrates that they will die, as none of them have the technical skills to survive on an island, but Petra counters that they will live the rest of their short lives well and welcome death when it arrives, they summon it, because that's the way the cookie crumbles. Zimit shoots, stopping him from detonating the rocket. He had found a cave and went deep enough to avoid the radiation. For the past year he has been there. Zimit can't let him commit an act as unreasonable as ending the human race. He threatens to shoot James with his last bullet, but the rest of the survivors stand in front of him. My man poet didn't have enough. They press the detonation button. Boom. Back in class, Zimit is ashamed by the latest exercise. Flashback to Carpenter. He ran his own little thought exercise. One man with six women all to himself. After questioning, what happened to three other males he explains, real estate agent drowned. Housekeeper had a barracuda attack. Electrician had a run-in with the palm tree. Being infertile doesn't mean the chance of procreation is zero. What's the point of living if you can't do some pair yoga exercises? Chemist gives him praise. At the end of the session, everyone leaves except Petra. She steps outside and accuses Zimit of trying to use the exercise to punish James. Zimit has been having an affair with Petra, and he believes James is beneath her. Petra argues that intelligence isn't all that matters. She loves James. Petra gives Zimit a last kiss and leaves. The film ends with Zimit alone in the school, running many thought exercises with himself, as he contemplates ending it all. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.